بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس السلام علیکم اور ٹوڈے از ٹاپک فار ڈسکشن از پبلک ریونیو ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ان دی پبلک ریونیو یونٹ کنسسٹ آف فیو ٹاپکس وچ ول ڈسکس ان ڈیٹیل اینڈ دیز ٹاپکس آر دا پرنسپلس آف ٹیکسیشن ایڈم سوتھ کینز آف ٹیکسیشن کریکٹرسٹکس آف اے گڈ ٹیکس سسٹم تھریز آف ٹیکسیشن Uh, classification of taxes, uh, taxation system of Pakistan, uh, partial equilibrium analysis and general equilibrium analysis of tax, optimal taxation, optimal taxation and income distribution, tax rate and base, taxable capacity, uh, tax to GDP ratio, tax elasticity, tax evasion, tax avoidance and optimal user fee. Uh, this lecture Uh, is divided into two parts and today we are uh, dis- uh, discussing the first part of uh, our lecture. Dear students, in the previous lecture we discussed in detail the uh, public expenditure, the heads of public expenditure. Today we will discuss the sources of revenue for a government because in order to finance that expenditure government needs Uh, certain resources, some sources, and out of these sources uh, in all developing and developed countries, the most important is the tax. So what is a tax? A tax is a compulsory charge imposed by a public authority against, against which taxpayers cannot claim anything. In other words, it's a compulsory payment uh, by a public to the state without expecting anything in return. The essence of a tax as distinguished from other charges by the government is the absence of a direct benefit. Means that uh, if a person tax, uh, pays tax, it doesn't mean that he will get a direct benefit in, uh, as a return of that tax. And this is the main feature of the tax against the other uh, uh, type of the payments. Anyone refusing to pay tax is punished under the law. As we, uh, the discuss here uh, that uh, tax is levied by public authority means uh, the taxes are levied under the country's law so any if a person uh, refuses to pay tax this means that he is uh, violating the law and uh, according to the law he will be punished nobody can object uh, to taxation on the ground that he is not getting the benefit of a certain state services If a per- person is not getting a uh, few services, uh, then uh, too, he cannot refuse the tax because uh, according to the definition of the tax, uh, tax is paid without uh, expectation of any type of the return. It is the personal responsibility of individuals to pay taxes under all circumstances and there is no direct relationship between benefit and tax payment. So. Uh, This means that uh, the tax payment and the benefit are not related means that the individuals pay taxes without expecting a return for it. Fees. The second source of revenue for the state is uh, taxes are the major source of revenue. The second source uh, compared to a small source is fees. It is a compulsory payment paid by those who enjoy a service in return. Fees, uh, fees are paid uh, 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 to the state and uh, some uh, type of the benefit is uh, uh, enjoyed by the individual. The fee is intended to cover part of the cost of service rendered. Fee is a payment to finance the cost of each recurring service undertaken by the government, primarily in the public interest. A license fee is paid uh, in those instances in which the government authorities invoked simply to confer a permission or privilege. We, we have uh, so many different types of the fee. We have the court fee, we have the license fee, uh, we have the arm license fee, we have the driving license fee. All these are a source of government for the state. The third source of uh, the uh, revenue for the state is the price. We know that uh, along with the public sector organizations, there are uh, uh, private sector organizations, there are public sector organizations as well. 
we see even in our own country so many um, public sector uh, enterprises uh, or the uh, public uh, commercial undertakings uh, in the example of the Pakistan Railways uh, uh, we have the uh, Pakistan International Airlines PIA we have the PESCO, TESCO, LESCO we have metro buses uh, similarly in Pakistan uh, Peshawar we have the BRT uh, which is also a type of the metro bus so all these uh, provide services and uh, as a return the public pay price for it so in modern times public sector occupies a main position in the economy and this is uh, not only the case of Pakistan but it is around the world public enterprises run by side by side by private enterprises the government may either sell goods or render services like train city bus electricity pesco tesco lesco we discussed earlier the transport uh, brt metro buses are example here the post and telegraph water supply and the people pay in return of this service the government also earns revenue from the production of the commodities like steel oil and life-saving drugs uh, similarly uh, the in pakistan we have the gas sui gas we have the sui uh, sngpl for this purpose uh, which provide uh, gas services to the public and in return the people pay the price so the earning from the public sector enterprises is another source of revenue for the state fines and penalties the fourth source of uh, public revenue for uh, is the fine and penalties these are the charges imposed on persons as a punishment for breaking a law when someone violates the law uh, uh, there are different types of the punishments for uh, that uh, violation of the law and uh, fine and uh, penalties are fine is one of the uh, such type of punishment and the main purpose of this is not to raise the revenue from the public but to force them to follow law and order of the country for example if somebody violates the traffic law then he the traffic police fines him similarly there are court fine uh, there are uh, different types of the fines uh, if somebody violates the law the fifth source uh, of the public revenue is uh, gifts and grants Gifts are voluntary contribution from private individuals or non-governmental non-government donors to government fund for specific purposes, such as relief fund, defense fund during a war or an emergency. However, this source provides a small proportion of the government revenue. It's another source of revenue. Uh, uh, sometimes the individuals or states or non-governmental organizations, NGOs, they give a grant to uh, the state uh, as a aid in case of uh, emergency so anyhow but such uh, type of the payments are very small part of the revenue for the state the sixth source is the printing of paper money uh, it is another source of revenue for the government it is a method of creating extra resources uh, this is uh, normally uh, avoided because if once this method of finance is started it becomes difficult to stop it and uh, uh, there are uh, worse effects of uh, this policy as well that is the reason that uh, in many cases the government uh, avoids such type of uh, the uh, cases borrowing is another source of, of revenue for the state borrowing from public is uh, uh, it's number seven borrowing uh, from public is another source of revenue we know that uh, in case of uh, the emergency in case of the need uh, the government uh, uh, and often the government have a deficiency of the funds and in order to finance its expenditure it takes loans uh, from the banks uh, from the individuals from the international organizations and uh, from the even from the states so uh, such type of uh, loan include loans from uh, the public in form of deposits uh, bonds and also from foreign agencies and organizations in Pakistan government takes loans from public banks IMF World Bank and the US UK and uh, so many other countries similarly apart from these sources there are other sources of uh, the revenue uh, as well 
uh, cheats uh, is a type of uh, the source of revenue uh, when a person dies or uh, hairless or devote his property to a state uh, then this property becomes a source of revenue for the state so this chart uh, explains uh, in detail the sources of revenue uh, we see here uh, that uh, we can divide the uh, sources of revenue into two broad categories uh, tax revenue and uh, non-tax revenue so for the tax revenue is concerned uh, we are uh, we will discuss the types of taxes uh, later on uh, the tax revenue include tax on income which include personal tax corporate tax uh, the custom tax excise tax turnover tax the value add tax taxes on property and taxes on commodities these are the uh, taxes on commodities income tax, uh, excise tax custom tax turnover tax value add tax uh, these are some type of the taxes which are major source of uh, revenue for the state and the not so far the non-tax revenue is concerned uh, these are these can be administrative revenue commercial revenue uh, borrowings and uh, others the administrative revenue uh, includes a fees license farm for fees uh, institutes and special assessments similarly the commercial revenues uh, we discussed uh, in the last uh, previous slides that uh, the revenues earned by the public sector enterprises are known as the commercial revenues. Uh, similarly, the uh, gifts and grants uh, and issue of currency are some of the uh, sources of revenue which are non-tax. Before going into uh, the detail of the tax, let's discuss first the history of uh, taxation the history of taxation extends to time immemorial its history is very old main source of uh, government revenue was a share of gross produce of all land varying uh, according to the quality of earth and the amount of labor necessary to cultivate it uh, if you look at the history the taxes existed in uh, old states in the like the Egypt, Greece, uh, even India and the Roman Empire. These are the um, old states where the uh, tax system existed in one form or another form. Uh, it was known as crime in early periods of Egypt while in Yemen it uh, existed 5th century BC. Uh, similarly, in India, it was called Bali centuries ago. In times of war, the Athenians imposed a tax referred to as uh, um, Asphora. No one was exempted from this type of tax, which was used to pay uh, for special wartime expenditures. In the Roman Empire, the earliest taxes in Roman Rome were custom duties on imports and exports, and Caesar Augustus was considered by many to be the most brilliant tax planner of the Roman Empire. Caesar Augustus in, uh, instituted an inheritance tax to provide retirement funds for the military. The tax was 5% on all inheritance uh, except the gifts to the children and spouses. English and Dutch referred to the inheritance tax of Augustus uh, in their developing own inheritance taxes. During the time of uh, Judas Caesar, a 1% tax as tax was imposed. Similarly, uh, in 60 uh, AD, uh, Queen of East uh, Anglia led a revolt that can be attributed to corrupt tax collectors in the British Isles. Her revolt killed almost uh, uh, all the soldiers uh, of uh, Roman Empire in the Hundred Miles and it seized London and it is said that over 80,000 people were killed during the revolt. The Queen was able to raise an army of 230,000 and the revolt was crushed by Emperor Nero and resulted in appointment of new administrator for the British Isles. Now let's come to the definition of the tax. Uh, the tax has been defined by different scholars in different ways. Uh, taxes are actually compulsory payment associated with certain activities. Revenues collected through taxation are uh, used to purchase the inputs necessary to produce government-supplied goods and services 
or to redistribute purchasing power among the citizens. Dear students, uh, the, we know that the, we discussed in detail in the previous lectures the public goods. We know that uh, the public goods are provided by the state, by the government, and in order to uh, the, uh, provide those goods, the government needs some money, and that money is uh, collected through the taxation. Uh, this was the, 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 the this is the statement of Hammond 2011. Similarly, Adam Smith, uh, according to Adam Smith, a tax is a contribution from citizens for the support of the state. Means that, uh, in words of Adam Smith, the uh, people contribute uh, to the state in the form of tax. And similarly, according to Taylor. A compulsory payment to the government without expectation of direct return in benefit to the taxpayer is known as tax. Taylor has also def uh, def uh, defined the tax in almost uh, in the similar words that uh, tax is a compulsory payment to the state without expecting any return. Another definition is uh, that a tax is compulsory contribution of wealth of a person or body of persons for the services of public powers. Similarly, a tax is compulsory contribution from person to the government to defray the expenses incurred in common interest of all, without reference to special benefits conferred. According to Musgrave, taxes are compulsory uh, imposed, whereas charges and borrowing involve voluntary transactions. Uh, according to Dalton, a tax is a compulsory contribution imposed by a public authority, irrespective of exact amount of service rendered to the taxpayer in return. So these are a few, uh, the, a few definitions of uh, the taxes. Objectives of taxation. The government levies and collects taxes for various objectives. The objectives may be spe specific or general. The government tax collect taxes in order to achieve certain objectives and these objectives can be uh, specific objectives. The purpose, basic purpose of the living taxes are to support the operation of the state means in order to uh, finance its uh, different activities, uh, influence the macroeconomic performance of the economy. The government strategy for doing this is called fiscal policy, uh, carrying out the functions of government such as national defense, right. providing government services, etc. Redistribute resources between individuals and classes in population and modify patterns of consumption and employment within the economy by making some classes of transaction more or less attractive. Now how these uh, the general objectives are number one raising revenues. We know that uh, uh, with the development of uh, the world with the passage of time the state the functions of the government are uh, increasing so due to increase in the functions of the state uh, the expenditure also, public expenditure also increased. In order to uh, finance that expenditure due to expanding functions, uh, the government needs revenue and uh, the, one of the way, one of the method uh, to increase the revenue is the taxes. So it's one of the major reasons for levying taxes is to raise the revenue. Uh, to render various economic and social activities, government requires large amount of revenue. To meet this enormous expenditure, government imposes various types of taxes in addition to non-tax revenue. The second purpose is uh, the removal of inequalities in income wealth. The welfare state aims at the removal of inequalities in income and wealth. By framing, framing a suitable tax policy, this end can be achieved. It starts in the canon of equality, the progressive tax, taxation on income and wealth and heavier excise and custom duties and taxes on luxury goods are suitable examples in this regard. Means that we government can achieve the uh, removal of inequalities in income and uh, wealth distribution through the taxes. If there is progressive tax system, uh, means that uh, uh, charging higher at a higher rate from the richer people and at lower rate from the poor people uh, will uh, remove the, uh, the, the the income disparity, the wealth disparity. Uh, similarly, the uh, taxation, uh, the uh, heavy duties must be levied on the luxury goods, while the basic necessities will be should be less taxed. 
in order to achieve the inequality in the income distrib income and wealth distribution the third reason uh, the third objective of uh, the uh, imposing taxes is ensuring economic stability uh, taxation affects the general level of consumption and production we know that uh, hence it can be used an effective tool for effective tool for achieving the economic stability means that through the tax system we can control the uh, inflation and deflation in the economy we know that uh, uh, during the period of boom or inflation the excessive purchasing power in the hands of people lead to raise in the price level in case of inflation uh, we know that the demand for good is uh, uh, higher and uh, it leads to increase in the uh, price level uh, raising the existing tax rate or imposing additional taxes can remove such uh, uh, excess power purchasing power and then a normal demand can be reduced by and uh, the economic stability can be achieved in other word in simple words we can say in order to control the inflation uh, the taxes can be levied and uh, the um, imposition of taxes will reduce the purchasing power of the people which will also reduce the aggregate demand and uh, is the excess demand uh, or uh, excess of aggregate demand or aggregate supply is an important uh, main cause of the inflation so uh, by a, a increasing the tax rate the purchasing power will be reduced and when the purchasing power is reduced automatically the demand for goods will be reduced aggregate demand will be reduced and a time will come when the aggregate demand will be equal to the aggregate supply. Similarly, if there is deflation uh, in the economy, uh, uh, means that uh, um, uh, the case can be reversed. So in case of deflation, uh, um, the tax policy can also play an important role uh, by reducing the tax rate and uh, removal of certain taxes, the consumption can be encouraged and uh, if you increase in the consumption the aggregate demand will uh, increase which will bring stability in the economy so this means that uh, one of the objective of uh, the taxation is uh, to bring stability in the economy and uh, uh, that stability can be achieved through a variation in the taxes reduction in regional imbalances it is normal that uh, certain parts of a country are well developed where some other parts are backward. To remove these regional disparities, the government can use tax measures by way of enhancing various tax exemptions and concessions to the particular backward regions or state the economic activity in these areas can be induced or can be accelerated. This is a very uh, important uh, method. This is a very good method to the uh, to uh, re remove the regional imbalances we know that uh, for example if we compare the karachi lahore islamabad peshawar uh, with the backward regions like uh, upper deer in Pesha, uh, in khaybar pakhtunkhwa like chatrar in khaybar pakhtunkhwa like the uh, gitgit baltistan like the some of uh, job and uh, the backward areas of the uh, balochistan uh, southern punjab the these these uh, if we compare the development in these regions this is not equal some of these regions are very developed while the others uh, as discussed are very backward so in order to uh, find in order to encourage uh, those backward areas tax concession can be granted uh, tax exemption can be granted uh, to the industries to the business uh, in that area which will encourage the business there which will encourage the industrialization in that area and uh, it will lead to in uh, to, to to develop the that uh, regions and remove the uh, regional imbalance in the state capital accumulation tax concession or rebate given to for saving investment in uh, pro provident funds life insurance uh, unit trust housing banks etc lead to a large number of capital accumulation which is essential for the promotion of the industrial development. Preventing harmful consumption, uh, th this is another uh, reason why the government uh, levy tax. 
Uh, one of the purpose of taxation is uh, that uh, to prevent the harm of the harmful consumption. By way of uh, we, we know that uh, on the narcotics heavy uh, taxes are imposed on liquors, on cigarettes, on cigars. Uh, a heavy taxation can reduce uh, its consumption. Beneficial diversion of resources, the imposition of heavy taxes on non-essential and luxury goods discourage the producers of such type of goods and uh, the resources utilized for the production of these goods may be diverted to uh, the production of other essential goods for which various tax concessions are given. This is called beneficial diversion. Encouragement of exports Nowadays, export-oriented industries are encouraged by way of providing various ex uh, exemptions like 100% D from income tax, free trade zones, etc. It results in large earnings of the foreign exchange. In order to the encourage the exports, in order to increase the exports, the export-oriented industries uh, should be given the uh, tax concession. Uh, and uh, it will lead to not only increase in the taxes, export duties, etc. Uh, the reduction in export duties can also increase the exports, which will uh, not only increase the income of the uh, exporters, but also increase the uh, foreign exchange reserves of the state. Enhancement of standard of living by way of uh, giving various tax concession to certain essential goods, the government enhances the standard of living of the people. Thank you very much. Uh, you can uh, use uh, you can use these resources for detailed study. These are uh, different types of the web sources and uh, a book uh, by him in public finance, a contemporary application of theory to policy.